He was known variously as the Wee Man, Ten Stone of Barbed Wire, and simply King Billy. Captain of Leeds United, he epitomised the graft and dedication that made an ordinary English club side into one of the best teams Europe has ever seen. Tonight on Yorkshire Television, we pay our special tribute to Billy Bremner. Billy was, by anybody's reckoning, one of the great players of the modern era. He played more than 50 times for Scotland, who of course have qualified for next year's World Cup finals. They'll play Brazil in the tournament's first game. Now, In tribute to Billy, Scotland's manager Craig Brown said, if we had 11 Billy Bremners playing against Brazil, we would not lose that game. Well, tonight we've brought together some of the great Leeds United team which Billy Bremner led so memorably. We'll be talking to those here in the studio and later in the show we'll be talking to many others who couldn't be here tonight. First, Alan Clark, Billy's death has obviously shocked us all. What did he mean to you as a captain and as a friend? As a captain, Billy led by example, I mean, his, uh, his performance. I mean, he was a very consistent player. Can't remember him ever, ever having a bad match, so he led by example as a captain and as a, as a teammate. As a friend, I think especially to me, um, a very special friend to me. Um, as a lot of people will tell you, I mean, uh, we literally went everywhere uh, together and as a group of players like uh, with the team at that time, we we go out uh, playing in golf tournaments and we go to functions, attend them and uh, I always pick Billy up and uh, as the lads will tell you, Billy and I always arrive to functions or golf tournaments, everywhere we're invited, together. And I found it very strange this evening, arriving at Yorkshire Television Studios without uh, Billy alongside me. And I I've, I've still find it very hard to accept that he's still no longer with us. Thanks so much for the moment, Alan. Well, we'll be talking to Billy's teammates later. There'll also be tributes from some of the big names of the modern game, including Alex Ferguson, George Graham and Ron Atkinson. But first, let's look back on the life of Billy Bremner. The team that was feared across Britain and the world, designed by Don Revy, led fearlessly by Billy Bremner. Billy's motto in a plaque above his dressing room coat peg was keep fighting. But only five foot five and ten stone, Bremner was living proof that football's a game where skill and tenacity can overcome an apparent lack of physical presence. His philosophy was simple. I think team spirit uh, is a big factor. Uh, the same way any team that gets success, they've got to have great team spirit, and we've got it here. It's been installed in us from when we were ground staff boys, we were all brought up together in the ground staff. And I think this is a big factor here. Billy Bremner was born in Stirling in Scotland in 1942. He was a Celtic fan, but the Glasgow Giants missed out on his signature. He came to Leeds to make his debut in 1960. The club had been in football's doldrums for decades until the arrival of Don Revy galvanised their fortunes. They were runners-up in the FA Cup in 1965. Three years later, they won the League Cup. The first major prize for a Yorkshire side in 33 years. Occasionally, Bremner's temperament was as fiery as his famous red hair, though he always claimed he was never a dirty player. The reason I was fiery is if I seen someone kick, the opposition, uh, kick my own players, then I got a bit upset about it, you know? So there was two sides doing the kicking, like, you know. Nevertheless, Leeds' uncompromising attitude, will to win and sheer professionalism earned them as many enemies as friends. And as Billy remembered years later, it was that League Cup final in 1968 that did as much as any other game to establish that reputation. There was a couple of ugly incidents on that. I don't think anybody looking back on it really relishes looking at it again. But uh, that shows you how competitive the game was in our day. We never really bothered about any football team we went out to play against. They seem to have vendettas against us, whether they, they disliked us intensely because we were probably the team to beat of, of that era. And uh, so consequently, wherever you're going to go, people are going to uh, roll their sleeves up that wee bit more when they're playing you. Um, but the second half, like you say, there was an incident with Gary, and I think he followed through as Gary came out with the ball and it started a wee skirmish again. And that. But that was, that was part and parcel of the game. And whatever anyone thought of Leeds and Bremner, they demanded respect, and they got it, even at Liverpool, where in 1969 they clinched their first league title. Lee Bremner took our team when we won the championship to the Leeds support. There was about 10,000 of them on the left-hand side of the ground, behind the goal. Then he brought them back to me, and I said, Bill, take them to the cop. Oh, I don't fancy that, boss. I said, go on, take them. So he walked the team. And I can see them walking now towards the cop, and the cop, 27,000, went deathly silent. 
and they let him get within six yards with the team of the cop, then they all started champions and they wouldn't let the players off the pitch for seven minutes. That and the 72 cup final against Arsenal were possibly the greatest moments in a glittering career. centenary year the cup goes to Billy Bremner and Leeds United whenever a team's been through a patch like you are then everybody's got that responsibility of course there were disappointments five times they were runners-up in the league before they won it a second time in 1974 Don Revy's swan song in the world I want you 10 foot tall when you go out there today because always remember there's nobody in the world as fit as you or better than you ability wise and knowledge wise and you've been playing European football and championship races and FA Cup finals so long that today we can't afford to drop any points. We've got to win all four home games and hope we collect three or four points away from home and I think the championship's wrapped up. Bremner also graced the international stage. He played 54 times for Scotland. While on their European travels, United won the Fairs Cup twice, although the big prize of the European Cup cruelly eluded them. He finally left United in 1975 for Hull and then in 78 joined Doncaster as player manager. But Leeds, by now relegated to the second division, called him back again. In his three-year spell, he took them to the verge of promotion back to the first division and to an FA Cup semi-final. When that finally ended with his sacking in 1988, typically he couldn't bring himself to be bitter towards the club that he'd loved for so long. I don't feel any bitterness. Uh, the chairman has made the decision and uh, I've got to respect and uh, uphold that decision. Would you consider going abroad if the right offer came along? No. No, I don't like abroad. I mean, I'm abroad now, I'm down for Scotland, isn't I? <laughs> sure enough, he went to Doncaster for a second spell and he remained true to the philosophy that guided his career. Football's not all about just the skill factor, it's about your, your makeup, whether you're determined enough or whether you've got enough passion for the game or whether you've got a great, de greater desire in opposition to win games. His management career ended in 1991. Subsequently, he made a name for himself on the celebrity circuit. But it's as a player, one of the best in the modern game and as a truly inspirational captain, that he'll always be remembered. Well, Bobby Collins, let's go all the way back to the start of his career. You're a fellow Scot, a fellow midfield player, out of the same mould, everybody says, and uh, yet you're regarded as a father figure to him. Is that how, how, you're, how you see yourself? <coughs> well, as I said in the paper, no, not exactly like that. But uh, Billy was similar to myself, and uh, we all know what kind of marvellous player he was. But I, what he did for me was, he could make me laugh, make me slightly happy, you know what I mean? And this was away from the game, because every time I would be with him, he was very jovial, you know? Did you ever have any doubts that he would take over as, as captain from you? Well, I mean, it was only right that Billy was going to be captain, I would say. But I mean, these things just happened. I mean, he had everything to be a captain, in which he became a great captain. And, of course, we all know he was a marvellous player, so... Paul Rini, That's talk good. about passion for the game. You, you were with him from very early on, 1963. What about his passion for the game? Passion was unbelievable. The first thing, though, I must say, was watching Billy when I was on the terraces. That's the first recollection. He was a young lad then. Uh, and then getting on to Leeds, uh, you learn so much from a player like Billy, super unbelievable player, uh, and a great leader, and you learn from people like that. OK, well, we'll chat again in uh, a couple of moments, but a number of Billy's colleagues couldn't be with us tonight because of prior commitments. Here now are tributes from three legends, starting with the great John Charles. Well, he never, he never wanted to lose, no. He was so strong and... and, and I think that uh, when they made him captain of Leeds United, uh, and when Don Rivey made him captain, I think that uh, the thing that he made the other players play as well, you know, although they were a great team, don't get me wrong, you know, but he made them play that little bit better, I think. And I think that uh, as a captain, he was, he was, he was terrific. 
A lot of people, you know, always thought Billy was fiery and, uh, and a lot of people called him dirty. He certainly wasn't dirty. I mean, he, uh, he was five foot five and he used to go in and tackle people like Ron Yates at six foot four. He was fearless, and, uh, but he had a wonderful ability. He was a lovely pass to the ball. And um, one of his greatest attributes on the soccer field was he never knew when he was beaten. You know, in Billy Bremner's book, until the final whistle went, no matter what the score was, you kept going right into the last. Nice fella, Peter said, the joker. If there was any joking or carrying on to be done, it was done by Billy Bremner and Johnny Giles, the two littlest fellas in, in, in the team and in the dressing room. But nobody ever took offence with it. It was good humoured. Well, Norman Hunter and Peter Lorimer were very definitely part of the Elland Road family. Eddie, what was it about this family atmosphere at Elland Road? Well, I think obviously Don Revy. Uh, he got a lot of great players. He got them to love the club, to play for each other, to work hard for each other. And Billy was his right-hand man in the park. I mean, it's as simple as that. He was a great captain for club and country. He was a great fella. Um, going well with everybody. Uh, fiercely competitive man. And he was just great to play with. Uh, and what about Billy's part in this family atmosphere? How did he contribute to it? It was just his general attitude to life. I mean, he had a great attitude to life. As Bobby says earlier, very funny man. Made you laugh. Get everybody mixing in together. And as I, as I said, when, when Don Revy wanted anything to happen on the park, Billy usually made sure it was carried out in no uncertain terms. He'd let you know if you were having a bad time. Mick, is that how you remember him, a, a tough taskmaster in midfield? Well, uh, when I actually joined and I was 15 years old, I think Billy thought he was the world's best midfield player. And I couldn't actually comprehend this. You know, he actually believed he was the best in the world. Now, at that time, with me just starting, obviously I could play a little bit, but I never had this attitude that Billy had. Now, I went through the team, most of the lads actually thought that, but Billy epitomised it somehow, that he was the best. And it turned out that he probably was. Uh, I'll miss him. You know, we'll all miss him. Uh, it's just a terrible loss for us all. Paul, was that something that, that you took into every game? This almost feeling that you drew from Billy, a feeling of invincibility almost? I think it was, yeah, but you've got to remember the team that we was in. Uh, people's asked me how we feel about this. Uh, every player is, is the same in the Leeds United side. It was really, we didn't particularly go out together off the park, we were perhaps in twos. Uh, on the park it was as one. If somebody uh, got a knock on the park, uh, everybody got that knock. Uh, Billy now is no longer with us. Everybody has lost that. So it was a great team to play in, but it was as one. OK, we'll talk again in a moment. Now, Billy's midfield partner, for the most of the time, was Johnny Giles. Now, their understanding and teamwork was said to verge on the telepathic by some people. Well, we spoke to Johnny earlier today about his 12-year midfield partnership with Billy. You're, you're doing something at a time in your life that you will never do as well again. And we were a group of players who did what we did very well and we lived for it. Billy lived for it. And when you're in that type of situation, you've got hard battles away from home, you go to East Germany, you've got vital matches where it forges a friendship that otherwise is not forced, I don't think. It's like going through a war together. And it's a relationship that, will, that stays with you for, for the rest of your life. And Billy, unfortunately, is the first of our group of players to, to go and I feel very sad for Billy and his family uh, that they're losing losing a father and, and a husband but also for our own group of players because whenever we have a get together again uh, it can't be the same because Billy won't be there and he was a vital member of the team. Helen it's obviously a very emotional time but I guess that uh, you you must be able to remember the, the humorous side of Billy as well at this time. Yeah, I think uh, <coughs> one of the things I remember when we qualified for the European Cup final, and it was an ambition of everyone connected with Leeds United, and especially the gaffer, um, to win the European Cup. As everybody knows, like the gaffer had left for England, but uh, we got there. And I remember playing Barcelona, I think uh, we beat them 2 1 at Ellen Road, the uh, second match at uh, Barcelona, we knew we had to score first, which we did. Peter Lorimer scored after about 15 minutes. But as I said, Billy was my roommate, and uh, I remember uh, in our hotel room on the afternoon of the game, my sister Bella says, Well, win, lose, or draw, because we were flying back the next day back to Leeds. I says, Win, lose, or draw. I says, uh, We're going to have a good night. We ain't going to go to bed. All oh, right, right, I'll like. So I remember uh, we got through and we were in the final. 
everybody's elated. And uh, I remember back at the hotel and we were all having a good uh, drink. Anyway, uh, I was with Mick Jones, actually, and uh, a few more lads, and I says, uh, where's Bill? And I happened to look round over my shoulder, and this is like half past four in the morning, he was my roommate, like, and uh, he's on all fours, cli climbing up the stairs, like. He was absolutely shattered, so I says, hey, Bill, where are you going? He says, I'm only going to the toilet, all. <laughs> well, that was, you know, he's shattered, but he went to bed anyway. Uh, <laughs> he was supposed to be leaving at half past nine for the airport to fly back. And I remember at half past seven, I says to Jonah, come on, I says, we'll go and uh, get him up, like, and say it's half past nine. I remember walking into our room, and he was in bed, and it was half past seven. So I says, Bill, I says, it's half past nine. I said, we're going. Says, he shot out the bed, went into the bathroom, brushed his teeth, and I said, just calm down. I said, it's half past seven. And I mean, the look that he gave me, like, but <laughs> we were always, that yeah. sort of, uh, sort of fun it was, really. Like the one. Well, of course, uh, the tight bonds forged between the players at Lalland Road was something other clubs admired and tried to emulate. Now, Billy's tenacious qualities were admired by opposing players too, once back in the safety of their dressing room. Players for Leeds United, and I think Billy epitomised that very thing. You know, he's a fantastic um, um, ambassador for not only Leeds United but Scotland at the time. You know, whenever you whenever you mentioned any of those two teams, you thought of Billy Bremner. Um, you know, he's uh, he'll go down in, in the annals of history of, of both country and uh, and club. You know, and um, and rightly so as well. A couple of years, you know, we put a pantomime on at the City Varieties in Leeds. We put a Cinderella on, and Billy Bremner was buttons. <laughs> I can see him now coming down the aisle, you know, in his little blue suit, and I absolutely creased myself. I was on the stage. I absolutely creased myself. But that was Billy, you know, he was, he was always full of life, full of life. Everybody smiling there. Eddie, talk of a permanent memorial. What, what do you think Leeds may do? Well, I don't know what the club will do, but I don't think Billy Leeds need a, really needs a memorial for people to remember him. I mean, he left his own memories for the people of Leeds, the supporters of Leeds United, and, and the club itself. People will never forget that. Paul, your memories, your last abiding memories of him, very quickly. Memories, very, very quick. I know my son's got great memories of him uh, because when I had my testimonial, uh, he was a little mascot and Billy had to look after him. And he went home minus underpants and socks and great. He'll always remember Billy. Okay, thanks very much, gentlemen. Now, in his long and brilliant career, Billy was always good copy for reporters and broadcasters. Yorkshire Television's own John Helm, working in the Middle East this week, followed Leeds across Europe and the world in their glory years. We Billy. Well, I can honestly say that he was the torchbearer for the greatest Leeds United side of all time. And it was true what Don Reavy said about him. He'd have played with a broken leg. He would have run through a brick wall for him. But one story just epitomises Billy for me. He was mortified once to be substituted in a game. And he virtually summoned me to do an interview with him about it. And he absolutely slaughtered the manager because he was fearless. Three days later, he went out and played the game of his life. Billy didn't suffer fools gladly, but once you were a friend, you were a friend for life. And I was proud to say I was a friend of Billy Bremner's. Well, those who met him or who saw him play will never forget Billy Bremner. The battling Scot will remain forever part of Yorkshire. We'll leave the final words to those people who mattered so much to Billy, his fans. From his former teammates and everyone here, good night.
always be in my mind and never forget him. He did a lot for this club. He were a battler. He got stuck in. He had team spirit. He was he, he, he was your man, you know. who line the streets and say goodbye and thank you 